Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are looking at a fraction problem and we are also going to talk about how to find the relationship between two variables. Really quickly before we get started, I did want to say thank you to one of my viewers, Thomas, for reaching out and sending me these um, the next few questions that I'm going to be making a video tutorials on. I always appreciate your guys' feedback and I'm always more than happy to help you guys out with a few questions you have or a few particular topics you're struggling with. I also do offer um, Skype tutoring. In that case, if you have a kind of a topic you want me to create a lesson plan on, or if you have more than just a couple questions you wanna do, then I do recommend um, you can send me the questions over and then we can do an hour long Skype tutoring session or something like that. But if, yeah, if you have any more questions on that, just email me because I don't want to spend too much time on that in this video. So, okay, let's go ahead and jump on in. So the first thing I notice when looking at this problem is that these denominators, these threes, aren't going to matter. They're going to cancel out. So my first step in this problem would be to write this as 5x equals 7y and then go from there. But let me explain why we can do that. So... Um, 5 over 3 times x is the same as times x over 1. And then on this side, we have a similar idea. So we have 7 over 3 times y over 1. Now, if you remember, when multiplying fractions, you multiply straight across, which means you multiply numerator by numerator and denominator by denominator. So this on this side, on this left-hand side, we're going to get 5x over 3 equals, again, we're going to multiply numerator by numerator and denominator by denominator, so we are going to get 7y over 3. So now, since we want to find the relationship between x and y, we're going to want to solve for one of these variables. So in this case, I'm just going to solve for x. So in order to do that, the first thing we're going to want to do is get rid of this denominator here. So in order to get rid of something over 3, I'm going to need a 3 in the numerator, because I'm able to cross cancel and reduce. So I'm going to multiply by 3 over 1. I'm going to cancel out these 3's like so. And then of course, since there's an equal sign in the middle, I'm going to have to do that to both sides. So I'm going to multiply by 3 over 1 on the right hand side. So I'm going to cancel the 3's out. And now I'm going to go ahead and just rewrite it. So uh, over here, I'm just going to have a 5x over 1, which I'm not going to write is equal to 7y over 1. So that kind of shows you why these 3's aren't really going to matter um, because basically if you were to multiply both sides by 3, those would just cancel out. So let me give you another example of when, when that works or how you can use that. So let's say you have something like 27xy um, equals um, 9 times 3xy and then both of them are over four, like so. So again, my first um, step in this question, if I were doing this problem, is I literally just wouldn't even write the fours, and I would write 27xy is equal to nine times three xy. Because again, if you were to multiply this side by four and then multiply that side by four, those would just cancel out with the denominators. So let me give you one more example. So let's say you have something like 2xy over 7 plus 3x squared y squared over 7 equals, let's just say, 10xy over 7. Again, my first step in this problem, it would be literally just to rewrite the numerators without the denominator. So I would write 2xy plus 3x squared y squared equals 10xy. Again, because since these have a, same den a common denominator, we could just add them. So in the numerator, you would just have 2xy plus 3x squared y squared, and then all of that would be over 7, and that's equal to 10xy over 7. So again, you'd be in a similar situation to here where you would just multiply by both sorry, multiply both sides by 7, and those would just cancel out, and you'd eventually be left with this numerators. So again, that's just a that's just a quick shortcut that I often take in algebra. Okay, so going back to the original problem, now that we're at this step, all we really have to do is solve for x. So we would just divide this side by 5, those would cancel out, and then we would divide this side by 5. So then we're left with x equals 7 over 5y. 
or um, 7y over 5. I just took this y out, which you're perfectly allowed to do because this is the same as y over 1. So this equation here is going to tell us the relationship between x and y because we can start plugging in values. So if y equals 1, we know what x, oh, sorry, yes, we know what x is going to be equal. Or if y equals 2, we know what x is going to be equal to. So we basically know that x is going to be equal to 7 fifths times y. All right, well, I hope that video was helpful. If I, if you felt like anything wasn't clear, anything like that, please leave me a comment below and I will definitely address it. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to come and join us over on Facebook. I just put together a really cool community and that's a great place to interact with me directly and I can help you guys out. You guys can also help out each other, which is a really awesome feature. All right, well, thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Oh,